culture meets sports, and casuals are welcome. Now here's your host, Philip Dukes. Yo, welcome to the Casual Flex. I am your host, Philip Dukes, aka Dukes D Scoop. Catch me on Twitter and Instagram at Dukes D Scoop. And make sure you go down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Today, I've got one of my personal friends, uh, Auburn great defensive end, also a member of the Arizona Cardinals, Mr. Alton Moore. What do do, Dukes? Big Al, what's going on? Man, I'm just chilling, man. Working the living. <laughs> All right, so look, man, a lot of folks, you know, from uh, who've been paying attention to Auburn are going to remember some of the bigger games that you've had. Um, one of the biggest games was probably one of Cadillac's biggest games as well. Uh, oh. 2001, Auburn versus Georgia. Uh, you guys come out on top 24 17. Lack goes crazy. Uh, 41 carries for, for like a hundred, for a buck 80, something like that. Crazy. Was, was he a true freshman that year? Man, true freshman. True, true, true freshman. True 41, freshman. 41 yeah. carries. 171 yards, but that would have all been for not except for you had probably the game in your life too. I think you had what uh two block, two block, two block field goals, a two sack. block field goals. Me and DT don't leave my my guy DT out. He was standing up with me. I know everybody tried to leave him out, but we we a family. DT, he was right there jumping up there with me. Dontarius Thomas, DT for yeah. sure. I gotta get off. Oh, I gotta get DT on too, man. We talked. He, he he definitely coming on. Yeah, but you had you had you had a game of your life. Like, what was it like knowing that as a defender you were able to make that type of impact on special teams and on defense again in a game that big? Well, I actually I, I definitely was proud because um I knew we was go- doing that the whole week. Coach Dunn um he had us practicing that the whole week, so I knew it was um I was gonna have the opportunity to actually block one at one. Not not only did I block one, but I blocked two, but. I knew I was going to have the opportunity to possibly block one. So I was definitely excited when it happened. Uh, I think it, the first one, the first one that we blocked, I want to say it almost took all the adrenaline out of me that I was so hyped after that block. So mm-hmm. that first one, and after that, every time I did anything, I was tired the whole time. You know, I did one play, I'm tired <laughs> the whole time. But the adrenaline was gone. I was, I had, you know, set up for that the whole week. And it actually it came came to the forefront and it happened. So it was very exciting. Yeah. So tell me about the, the the defensive line that you played on. And even like Auburn at that time, Tommy Tuberville was kind of getting his feet up under him. And uh, the, you and Javar Mills and a couple of other guys, uh, there was a heavy junior college influence on that team. I think Rudy Johnson came in. Yeah. Was Rudy on that team? Yeah, Rudy's on that team. No, not that team. Rudy's okay. on the team before. Okay. So you but got me and Rudy came in actually together. You and Rudy come in together. So right now, if you look at what uh Auburn head coach Hugh Freeze is doing, he's doing something similar to what happened when you came to Auburn and the other guys like the Rudy Johnsons, the Daniel Cobbs of the world who came in out of junior colleges. How does that that impact a team differently by having a junior college guy? coming in and ready to play versus a high school guy? Well, first thing, you have to be ready to play. Right. Um, and one thing when you get that as a junior college player is having that Auburn family embrace you. Mm-hmm. You know, it was from day one. I never felt like I was – from day one, I felt like I was there my, my, my freshman and sophomore year because the Auburn family embraced me. Right. So it made it much easier to transition when you have people on your side ready for you to, to you know, excel. So it was definitely easy, and the impact that Hugh Freeze is having on it, you know, it definitely can get you right back where you want to with the depth-wise. Um, let's not say it can take you all the way over the top, but depth-wise, those guys can come in and contribute contribute and stuff like that and um, give your team that boost they need, you know, to maintain in that third or fourth quarter when, it, when times get hard. So definitely I commend Hugh Freeze to um, even reach out, especially the office and defensive line. Right. You know, you can be high school football, JUCO football. Them trenches sometimes are the trenches. Right. So as many guys as you can have down there that can hold their own in the trenches, right. it definitely can um, help your team, you know, in those right. third and fourth quarters. 
No, for sure. So my first day in Auburn, or my first game in Auburn was the Wyoming game. And a lot and, and and this game had two major plays. One of them was Rashard Gilliard coming up hitting the Wyoming tight end. The yes. helmet goes one way, the football well, goes the other. <laughs> walk, walk, walk me through so that. He, he walk me through so that hard. play. He actually hit him so hard, I kind of felt like, ooh, come on, is he okay? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I felt like that because not only did he do it in that game, you know, he didn't pull stunts like that in practice as well, but that's a whole other story. Right. That was actually, dude, my first Auburn game as well. Okay. Okay. My first Auburn game as well. And it just so happened I recorded my first sack in that game. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was my first first game playing at Auburn and recorded my first sack in that game. And I remember after that game – um. Funk, Funk, um, Ronnie Daniels. Ronnie Daniels, Funk. Funk. Oh, I got to get Funk on here, too. Go ahead. Yeah. We, we call him Funk, but um, um, right. Ronnie Daniels. He came to me after the game because, you know, he was already um, pretty much a big-time player. Auburn had a dominating game at Georgia the year before and stuff like that. So he came up to me after that game and said, well, you got that one set that game. All you got to do is get one each game and you're on your way. Mm-hmm. And, man, that gave me so much confidence coming from one of the leaders on the team Mm-hmm. Man, it made me want to, you know, go out there and play harder. But that that game, and also, if you don't remember, Rudy Johnson, that second time, I guess you're talking about Rudy, mm-hmm. Rudy, had a play. I was on the sideline, and he hit the hole, and I could have swore it was about three people on him. Right. And he, he comes out the hole, and he's still running, he's still running. And I'm like, they can't tackle this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they can't tackle this guy. Hey, by the time he hit, you know, hit that, the, I think it was the linebacker, the safety right there. Right. And he bounced off him. I said, oh, he gone. He's over. He, he, he gone. House call. Yeah. And that was the first time I said, okay, this is big time college football here. You know, right. I felt like that in that game, you know, being the first sack, seeing Rudy make that run, seeing that big hit, those right. things really stuck out to me. Okay, so Last Chance University is like a really, really popular program, right? And they they go into junior college and you got the guys who got their different stores. Tell me about your experience in junior college and what and what made you pick Auburn leaving junior college? Man, junior college, I know for some of these kids, it can be a great experience. Um, my son's actually in junior college right now. That's his mother's store. But junior college for me, I had an all-star deep line. You know, you had me on – a defensive end, I went to Auburn. The other defensive end on my other side, Kenora Ellis, he went to Florida. Right. You had um in the middle, we had um my homeboy Rodney, he went to LSU. Right. You know, played in the league for about 10, 10 years. And had my other D tackle right here, Eric Powell, he actually went to Florida State. Oh wow. And we all played on that same defensive line. So coming from those different states into the Mississippi JUCO, man, we formed a brotherhood. Right. And it really helped me. And me coming to Auburn, choosing Auburn, because I had the opportunity to go to Miami. Right. And Miami was the hot team then. You know, they was coming off the, the national championship. They had everybody <laughs> had everybody down there. Right. I'll tell you a little story about what happened then. If you want to hear a little backstory behind Hey, come me. on. Come on with me. Hey, so i like, Mom, I got I got an opportunity. They want me to come down on a visit. You want to go? Yes. I'm like, I want to go. I want to go. My mom was, you know, being from the Mobile area, she all the way Auburn. No, nope, Auburn, Auburn, Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm like, uh, Mom, we got to we gotta at least go down there and um, check it out. Ashley um, set the visit up for December the 26th, the okay. day after Christmas. Right. And had Christmas with the family, got up that next morning about 6 o'clock, had a plane. Me and my mom had was going to go on a plane at 10 o'clock. I'm up at 6 o'clock excited to go, to go down and see Miami and stuff like that. I went to my mom's room. She's still in the bed. <laughs> She's still in the bed. She, I'm like, Mom, you got to get up. She said, well, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, we're not going nowhere. <laughs> hey, and it, it, oh, man. Was I they mad in Miami? Room. Was they mad? I went to my room, and I actually was kind of upset for a second. Um... And about three or four hours later, mom was kicking reps and stuff like that. I forgot all about it. You know, it was all been since then. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, mama made the decision ahead of time. 
that. Yeah, she already knew she wanted to be close. I wanted Auburn too, but I wanted to go look. Right, right. So like that that leads me to another question. Like, how do you feel about players that commit to a college that still go visit other colleges? Uh, man, this day and age, I think players have to take all the, you know, any opportunity that's right in front of you that you you could believe that's possible that could be you, you mm-hmm. have to look at it. Right. And as a um as a coach, you gotta be open to letting that kid go do that, you know. These kids are, especially, you don't want a kid to get in your program that you have in your program for a year and a half and you basically waste a scholarship on him because he really don't like being there and stuff like that. So you definitely want to take the time and, you know, go ahead and look and make sure this is where you want to go. Right. Two weeks before, two or three weeks before the, um, you know, for signing day, you need to be locked in, though. Right. No last second business, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Man, look, if you – a lot of times, those last second visits, that people get nervous. As uh, I've been doing recruiting, like more seriously in the past year or two, like you start to see coaches get nervous when one of their commits, like, was like, I, I want to yeah. go check somebody else out at the end. It's like, hey, 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 Man, man. <laughs> hey, so you got you got guys. So on that defensive line, you had like a you, you got Big Spence, DeMarco McNeil, who's probably like you know one of the best play, high school White. players ever. You know, Marcus, God R- bless R- the dead. Marcus White. Marcus White, man, for sure. Like, I mean, you can go on and on and on mm-hmm. with all of the talent that you played with coming out of JUCO. How did it feel? to be able to play with guys just as good when you got to Auburn? And 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 when did you know that you belong? Well, I can honestly say, coming to Auburn, you know, playing in the Juco League, I didn't know guys really was as big as me or bigger than me, um, being just as agile, just as quick. I really didn't know they made those type of guys. <laughs> you know, I, I thought I was one-on-one. <laughs> really, I really did. I thought I was one-on-one. You know, and seeing those guys and seeing them all up and down the line, not just one, DeMarco with his quickness, uh, Spence with his power, um, mm-hmm. um, Marcus White with his all-around game, Reggie Torbo with his get-offs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it was really a- amazing to me. And um, I had this one practice, though, I remember, that let me know I probably um, belong. He might kill me for telling this story. Uh-oh. I'm going to tell this story here. Um, my man... Um, Johnson, uh, Rob Johnson, um, Ra Ra, Ru Ra Ra, Ra Ra Johnson, down tight end, down in from, from I think he went to Carver High School in Montgomery. From he from and, um, you know, we had this practice, and back then we were still doing Oklahoma drills. Oh man, we were still doing Oklahoma drills, right? So it was real at our practice, none of this had stuff, right? You know, and I went against, I went against, um, Ra Ra, um, Ra Ra, and I actually smushed it. Ooh. He might tell the story different, but this story is true. I'm gonna get Ra Ra on here. So so look now, you know I'm gonna go get Ra Ra too. This story is true. This okay. story is not fabricated or nothing like that. This story is true. <laughs> it's witnesses to this story. And I actually smushed him. And my coach, my D-line coach, Terry Price, which I think is at Texas AM right now. Right. He came out the crowd. Yeah, more. Yeah, more. <laughs> hey, he hit me on the side of my head and um, you know, he. He gave me that announcement. Yeah, that's how you do it because Ra Ra was no pushover. Yeah, Ra Ra could have played it. Look, today, Ra Ra could have played offensive tackle and been in the league for 30, 40 years now. I mean, like, hey, don't like I'm, that's how they build it now. That's how big Ra Ra was. I understand how good he actually was. Man, Ra Ra was a monster, him, bro. He a monster. Monster. You know, I, I might have got him that round. Not to say he ain't never got me, but I know I got him that first round, you know, our first battle. And that's the time that you knew. Like, oh yeah, I, I, I can knew play I belonged because I saw that guy was doing things out there. I knew he belonged. Man, you know? no, absolutely. Like when you see Ra Ra, I used to see him. I used to be like, bro, that's all big. Because he wasn't no big sloppy dude. He wasn't no, no. skinny dude. He was just a big dude. Ra Ra probably was six 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 seven. Easy. Ra Ra was the first person I saw catching footballs out the jug with one hand, both hands. Ooh. He's the first person, not no 15 yards. I'm talking about six yards, five yards, catching 
right out of the jug. Boom, boom, boom. Man, you know, pe- first- people don't realize how much talent really was on that team. Like, man, you got like a rah-rah. Man, probably one of the best players that I've ever seen that nobody ever got to see in uh, DeAndre Green out of uh, Blunt and Mobile. Like, man, Didi was a Super damn. Talented. Super talented. Didi was a linebacker playing wide receiver, bro. Hey, he, he made sure you knew it every time he caught the ball, too. <laughs> <laughs> he made sure you knew it. You was a little boy compared to him. Man, no, nah, a- absolutely, man. So just – uh, and, and it's good to reminisce on some of these days because we see where Auburn is now. But a lot of the times, like, the, 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 the groundwork in Auburn, even how Auburn is today, to know that you guys helped pave the way for these guys to be able to come in, some of the newer guys to come in and do what they do. Even even when you go back to, like, the 04 team, like, seeing the type of influence that your class had on the 04 team, and seeing how the 04 team inspired more teams, and you got coaches going back. You got like lack lack as a coach now. So then yeah. you see all the guys from 04 going down. So let's talk about when you leave Auburn, you go undrafted, and you make the Arizona Cardinals. Like, how yeah. was that knowing? Like, so you go, you, you leave Auburn, and then you, you you go to the NFL undrafted. You make the Arizona Cardinals. You out there with the likes of Thomas Jones Thomas and Jones. David Boston and Boston. guys like that, like and Jake, seeing the all snake. This, Jake the Snake, and, Jake Plummer. Emmitt Smith, his, it, you know, when he came out there. Emmitt Smith, like, yeah. how did it feel when you got to be in a locker room with all these guys that you that you, that, that we were just playing Madden in the dorm? Like, in the dorm, we just playing Madden <laughs> with these guys, and now they're your teammates. How was that? Man, it was, it was a crazy experience, man. I can tell you um, – Thomas Jones, you know, he, he he do his acting now. Um, my locker was right beside him. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, he, he made me feel, you know, give me that almost like an Auburn feel, because he made me feel comfortable mm-hmm. with telling me, man, I see you out there. I see you out there. You know, every day trying to make that team, it's a grind. You mm-hmm. don't know if you're going to be there the next day or not. But, you know, I'm coming down, sitting in my locker right by him. And he whispering, whispering in my ear, telling me, I see you out there. I see you out there. So right. it gave me that positive feedback that I that I needed at that time, being around the likes of those guys, the right. Emmitt Smiths, the Jake the Snakes, and stuff like that. Right. So it just it definitely was a great experience, man. Um, I can't say anything bad about it, but I can also say Arizona Cardinals practices didn't have nothing on Auburn practices. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> nothing. How, so when you say the practices at Auburn were hard to like, what made Auburn's practices harder than an NFL practice? Well, like I told you, man, NFL, you don't do Oklahoma drills. You, you know, we were right. still doing that back in, um, at Auburn. Right. Um, we didn't have, um, you know, everybody going to do pass rush. But in Auburn, we actually did lockups every day, you know, beat the run block. Basically. Mm. You know, we didn't do that every day in the NFL. We were in, you know, bucking heads every day in the NFL. So in Aubrey, it didn't matter if you had on just full pads, shoulder pads, shoulder pads and shorts. It didn't matter. You was doing those drills, those those basic physical drills every day. And I and, think that showed, like, with the physicality of those teams from Auburn in the early 2000s, like, mm-hmm. those teams were so physical. I mean, it was a different game back then, but even still, like, you could just see when you knew that you had to play Auburn, you knew it was a dog fight. You knew that, yeah, like, they're yeah, like these yeah, boys is finna hit fight, you, man. Right. It's gonna, it's gonna be a dog fight because it's. I'm talking about one thing about them teams I played on the Auburn, the individual co- uh, confidence that each player you know put forth. I'm talking about everybody was confident. Everybody thought there was a, a, a bad shit your mom. <laughs> <laughs> everybody thought there was. Everybody thought that, and you know, when all that confidence come together as a team, right, man, that was, that was, that was a sight to see. You know? No, nah, absolutely. Like, so can, can you, I'm thinking, like, and we got the school, you got like the likes of like, you got Junior Rose Green, Joe Personality, Joe yeah. Walker. <laughs> you know them now. They already, they still big companies, right? <laughs> For sure. Uh, Lowe's Dansby. Like, like, look, look, look. Lodi is like one of them guys who, like, he going to be real quiet and tell you, hey, I'm the best. <laughs> like he ain't gonna say like it ain't gonna be like no whole you, bunch you, you of this. You said Lodi, right? Yeah, Lowe's De- Lo- Carlos Dansby. Yes, yes, yes. It got to a point he used to be like that. Right. By the time he started whooping you so much, 
And so it wouldn't be so much. Oh, it was it was front row then. <laughs> you know, he was front row with him. I'm, 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 you know, that's a real that's a real thing now. <laughs> on a bid. Yeah. 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 My boy so, Low. Hey, what's up, Low, man? Hey, we gotta get great, you back on great, here too. Man. Nah, nah, for sure. Like, what's the craziest thing you saw at Auburn, dog? Like locker room. I don't know if you can say it, like locker room, inside. Give me some insight about the early 2010s. Craziest oh, thing man. you saw, dog. Nah, never mind. Not, okay, say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. What's the craziest thing you saw? Yeah, I can't, I can't. you know, some of the, it's one story I had um you know, I don't know if this story is true. I think I heard it. I don't know if I heard it, you know, but I'm going to tell this story because it sounds like something that should have been true. DeMarco McNeil told me this story here, okay? Okay. DeMarco, we already know how you do. Right. So we we in Vanderbilt playing Vanderbilt. We up 40 to 7 at halftime. Right. Coach Tomville come in the locker room, you know, and like, look, we got to we gotta stay healthy. We got a long SEC season ahead of us. We ain't gonna sit on this ball. We just gonna get up out of here, healthy, and get on back home. You know, because we knew we was very much talented with them. And Demarco, these are the words of Demarco McNeil, and I hope you talk to him because he'll tell you this story. Okay. He said we had Lack. Lack was a true freshman. Right. And Lack, um, he said <laughs> Lack, Lack raised his hand and said, um, "Coach, don't give me the mother <laughs> I'm gonna take it to the house." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said, man, I don't know if I remember that. Something could have happened like that, but I don't know if it was just that. He said, Cadillac raised his hand and said, man, don't give me the motherfucker. I'm going to take it to the house. Now, I don't know if that's a true story, but DeMarco, he can show and make a story sound good. Boy. Hey, hey, that's hilarious, bro. But, hey, it's funny, too, because guess what? That's what Lat was doing. Was man, Lat- no, no, no. Here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. Right. The first play of the second half, they gave the ball to Cadillac. <laughs> Guess what happened? He took it to the house. <laughs> I don't know if that's a 100% true story. I'm going to make that clear. Right. But normally, Marco don't be too far off. Right. He might it, just it, sprinkle a little Marco on it. You it know. was something in there. Yeah. It was something in there. Nah, for sure. Man, look. David Boston, when you were with the Cardinals, David Boston was a 6'1 receiver, built like some you never seen before. And the time where it wasn't a whole lot, those big receivers wasn't in. But see, he wasn't the six four receiver. He was just big, like, you know, yeah. just just a big dude. What's, tell the, you, me- what, what's the craziest thing you saw David Boston do when you were with the Cardinals? Man, let me tell you, David Boston, believe it or not, his upper body wise was probably it was bigger than his, but I just give you what it what it kind of looked like. It was about big as Spence up top. Spence. Okay. Big big as a defensive lineman up top. Big as a defensive lineman and whatever. Now, the craziest thing I've seen him do, um, Baltimore won the um the Super Bowl the year before. Right. They had um D Starks. He right, had, Dwayne Starks. Yeah, Dwayne Starks had to pick in the um in the in the um championship game and everything. And he mm-hmm. signed us a free agent with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of money, you know. The first or second practice, you know, these stars supposed to be here. He the he the you know number one cornerback in free agency. We signed him. Him and him and um Boston up against each other in practice. Right. When I tell you this man ran a 15 yard comeback. He mm. stopped on the dime and left B Starks going crazy, you know, and <laughs> came back and caught that ball. Right. Now, so I never seen a guy that big move that fast that can stop on the dime. And hey, you, you know, know you, hey, hey, you know what song you told me back in the day? I forgot what, what we were talking about. You said, man, dude can stop on a dime, tell you if his heads or tails, and keep going. <laughs> All the above. <laughs> All the above. And right. He, and the craziest thing after that play, right? Boston went to the sideline, took his shoes off, and said, I ain't pressing him over there. Wow. Wow. But because that's the million dollar man, Boston ain't pressing him over. And he ain't pressing him over that day. He said, feet hurt. <laughs> My feet hurt. These are true stories, bro. True story. True. true hey, story. man. Like, bro, I think, like, when it comes down to, like, like, 
we, we we talk about like football and life. So when you get out of Arizona, you coming out of Mobile, being in Auburn for a while. How like how did you adapt to being in Arizona? Like, cause like I know you, I know you wasn't just going just to hang out like by the the complex. Like you going to the hoods, you going to see people, you going to relate, you going to feel where you at home. Like, how was that for you to be a part of like su- such a like you know football teams, NFL teams, and, and communities? They like heroes, superheroes, superheroes. Like, like when you when you uh, when you play for Auburn. To everybody, like you're a superhero. Like, how did it yeah. feel going to connect with those neighborhoods and people from like places like you from when you were able to be like under the guise of like the Arizona Cardinals? How was that for you? Well, you like when I was in Arizona or when I was back home? And uh, both. Both. When I, when I was in Arizona, it was very easy because I went to Arizona with three aunties out there, about seven first cousins. Oh, okay. You know, I ain't know that. Uncles, I have I got family out there still to this day. I'm actually going down to Martin, so you know, to see them and stuff like that. So right. it I actually kind of felt like home. Mm-hmm. You know, it felt like home because I was able to see them every day, you know, and mm-hmm. see them on the weekends and stuff like that when we weren't playing and things like that. So it was very easy to adapt. Mm-hmm. Coming back home to my hometown, it was great too. You got that same kind of respect that Auburn carries with them everywhere they go. Right. And me being from that area, you know, you got that same kind of, oh, he go to Auburn. He go to Auburn. So, you right. know, especially the little kids, they look up to you. Right. Nah, nah, that's dope, man. So, man, Al, man, I want to say, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's been fun. Uh, we got to get you back on. We're going to do some commentary. Really, I'm, a, I'm, really, I want to bring you on my, uh, my Sunday show so we can just talk about what happened during the week. Cause like at the end of the day, like y'all see, like this is a, this is a very PG, uh, Politically correct conversation. That is my partner, my partner. So like, <laughs> like, you know, I know it seemed like all these guys is my friends. He's one of my best friends in the world. So we gonna give y'all a real show where we can tell some hey, of these stories for sure. I can't I can't wait to do it. I also wanna salute you, man. I wanna I wanna give you your flowers because man, to see you doing something you love and enjoying it. Right. And and it's actually coming full circle um for you. Right. Man, I'm proud of you. I want to say that first and foremost to your face. I'm proud of you. You know, and man, I'm just happy for you, man. I say keep going. I salute you. Hey man. Hey man. I appreciate that, man. From the from the biggest of the big dogs. For sure, man. Hey, make sure y'all like and subscribe to Casual Flicks. We out.